Which is better, the Moto G8 Plus or the Samsung Galaxy A51? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. This video is sponsored by Aki's latest USB-C power delivery fast chargers. With everything moving towards USB-C nowadays, it's time to upgrade. All three of these new USB-C chargers feature fold-in prongs. They have a charger with a smaller single USB-C output at 18 watts, a 30 watt charger with USB-C plus a standard USB 3.0 output, and finally, a 36 watt charger with two USB-C outputs. All three are very affordable, and check out the link in the video description to learn more. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with my comparison between the Moto G8 Plus and the Samsung Galaxy A51. Now the Moto G8 Plus was launched in October of 2019, and was the first of many upcoming G8 phones for Motorola to be released. In fact, very shortly from now, we're going to be getting the Moto G Stylus and then also the Moto G8 Power. And of course, I'm going to be getting those phones to cover here on the channel. And the Samsung Galaxy A51 is a little bit of a newer phone to the market. It was launched in December of 2019 as an international device. And this phone has been a huge success for Samsung. In fact, things are going to get even better this year for the phone as it makes its way over to a variety of different carriers officially. But right now, for either of these two devices, you can use them with any GSM carrier in the US. So whether that's AT&T or T-Mobile or any carriers under those carriers, you can go ahead and use these devices with those. Now the Moto G8 Plus is a little bit less expensive than the Galaxy A51, and you could actually get it for around $199. So I have seen the price kind of fluctuate up to $210, $220 as well but definitely take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for not only this device, but also the A51. And the situation for the A51 is pretty much the same as well. The price originally was a bit higher than it currently is, but right now you can get it on Amazon for around $299. Now the Moto G8 Plus features a 6.3 inch display. It's an IPS LCD display at 1080p. We're getting a PPI of 400, so very impressive and a 19 by 9 aspect ratio, along with an 82.5% screen to body ratio. So a pretty nice piece of hardware here. And with the Galaxy A51, we have a 6.5 inch display with an Infinity O cutout at the top for the front facing camera. It features a Super AMOLED display at 1080p, a PPI of 405, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So we're getting a little bit of a taller, more narrow design with the A51 compared to the Moto G8 Plus. But you can see when putting these two phones side by side here, they're pretty much about the same size. The A51 is slightly larger, but the G8 Plus certainly is not as efficient with using its screen real estate here. As you can see, we have a thicker bottom bezel and then also a notch at the top of the phone. And then of course, another downside of the G8 Plus compared to the A51 is that we are of course getting that LCD display, which I think does look pretty nice, but there's no doubt about it that the A51 does have the better display of the two. Now keep in mind, since the G8 Plus is $100 cheaper than the A51, it makes sense that some of these features aren't quite as good. And at the end of the video, I am going to go over my final thoughts about these two devices to kind of come to a conclusion on whether or not it's worth saving $100 to go with the G8 Plus. Now up top here with the Moto G8 Plus, we're getting a 25 megapixel front facing camera and the Samsung Galaxy A51 features a 32 megapixel front facing camera. Now the good news though is that with both of these devices, you are able to take really good looking, crisp and clear selfies. So if you're into taking selfies, I think you'll like either of these two devices. Now the Moto G8 Plus features 64 gigabytes of internal storage with SD card expansion, whereas the Galaxy A51 features twice that amount at 128 gigabytes with SD card expansion as well. Neither of the two phones feature wireless charging, and they both do feature fingerprint sensors, but with the Moto G8 Plus, the fingerprint sensor is on the back of the device, and it is very fast and responsive, and the Galaxy A51 has an in-display fingerprint sensor, which works really well too. I will say though that 
Comparing these two devices, the G8 Plus does have a quicker fingerprint sensor. And I think in general, having a more traditional fingerprint sensor is faster no matter what phone you use compared to having an in-display fingerprint sensor. But if you do like having that feature of having it built into the display, then you might want to consider going with the A51. Now, both devices also feature face unlock, which is really awesome. So if you don't want to do a fingerprint sensor at all, and you just want to do face unlock, then you can do that with either of these two devices. Now on the back of the two phones, we have quite a few cameras. <laughs> so on the Moto G8 Plus, there's a 48 megapixel main camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a five megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode. Now with both of these devices, by the way, you do get portrait mode with both the front and rear cameras. And with the Galaxy A51, we have a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a five megapixel depth sensing camera, and a five megapixel macro camera. The macro camera is pretty pointless because you can actually take clearer close up photos with the main camera. And then by zooming in, you can pretty much replicate the entire macro effect. So I don't really see that as being a benefit with the A51. I mean, it is a cool novelty to have, but in my opinion, I don't think it's really a feature that <laughs> makes it worth getting the A51 over the G8 Plus. But there is one big difference that you certainly will want to take note of. And hopefully this is something that Motorola can address in a software update. But as of right now, you are not able to take photos with the ultra wide angle camera. And that's one of my favorite features with having an ultra wide angle camera in general. Let me take a photo here of these boxes with both devices. So you can see, here's the standard camera with both phones. So both look nice and clear. However, with the A51, if I switch over to the ultra wide angle camera, you can fit way more content into the frame here. But unfortunately, with the G8 Plus, you simply don't get that feature. So with the ultra wide angle camera, you are limited to only taking video. But Motorola does have a really cool trick up their sleeve with the G8 Plus, as you are able to take video horizontally with having the phone be vertical. So that's a really cool feature. I wish that other companies would add that to their devices because so many people instinctively start taking video with their phone being vertical. But you can see that in this situation, I'm able to take video in the landscape aspect despite having the phone be vertical. Now I can switch over to the standard video mode as well if I want to, and you can see that it really does crop in on things. So without a doubt, using the action cam mode here does indeed use the ultra wide angle camera. Now what's interesting though is that if you do want to take video with the ultra wide angle camera with the A51, it is quite a bit wider and you can fit a bit more content into the frame here. Now with the Moto G8 Plus, we're getting the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 processor. That is a processor that I am a big fan of. It's a really solid processor. And with the Galaxy A51, we have the Samsung Exynos 9611. Now I did do an Intuitu benchmark test with both phones, and this is certainly very eye-opening. You can see that with the Moto G8 Plus, I got an overall score of 170703. And with the Samsung Galaxy A51, I got an overall score of 177. 594. So almost the same score here with both phones. And in fact, with the CPU score, with the Moto G8 Plus, it's actually quite a bit higher compared to the A51. So despite the Moto G8 Plus being $100 cheaper than the Galaxy A51, you are going to be getting just as good, if not better, performance. So that's a pretty interesting discovery there, and I think that definitely might change some minds about which phone is the better choice. Now video recording with both devices maxes out at 4K, so that's a cool thing to see with these phones, despite them being a bit cheaper than a flagship, you can still take 4K video. They also both feature beefy 4000 milliamp hour internal batteries with 15 watt fast charging. Now something to consider is that typically Qualcomm processors are more power efficient than Samsung Exynos processors, so you should expect to get better battery life with the Moto G8 Plus compared to the A51. Now as far as software goes, there are some pretty big differences with these two devices. Now with the Moto G8 Plus, we do have Android 9 Pie. Now it is a stock variant of Pi, so that's great. You know, if you do want a stock Android experience, you know, very similar to what Google offers with their Pixel phones, then you're gonna feel right at home with the Moto G8 Plus. And with the Galaxy A51, we have Android 10 with Samsung's One UI 2.0. Now without a doubt, you're gonna be getting way more software features with the Galaxy A51 compared to the G8 Plus. For example, you get this cool feature called App Edge, where you can add your various apps to the side of the device, 
That's one of many advantages that Samsung's One UI 2.0 offers over stock Android. But of course, with the Moto G8 Plus, you are getting Android very similar to the way that Google has envisioned it. Now, as far as the security patches go with the two devices, at the time of me recording this video in early April of 2020, the Moto G8 Plus is stuck at January 1st, 2020 as its security update and the Galaxy A51 is stuck at February 1st, 2020. So definitely a bit disappointing that both of these companies have been very slow to implement security patches for these devices. And I feel like especially for Motorola, it should be even easier to implement the various security patches because this device nearly does run stock Android. But let me know in the comments section below whether or not you think security patches are important to you. But now that we've gone over the specifications of these two devices, let's talk a bit about the hardware. So I already talked a lot about the fronts of the two devices, definitely kind of a more modern look with the Galaxy A51. And the Moto G8 Plus definitely looks a little bit older, kind of like a phone that would have been launched in late 2018 or early 2019. But I think both devices still do look pretty nice in general. And of course, I am a big fan of the AMOLED display with the Galaxy A51. I think it is a lot better than the display that we get with the Moto G8 Plus. However, the Moto G8 Plus does still have a good looking display. So it's certainly not bad here. It's just that this is better. Now both phones feature a plastic build, minus the display of course. On the left side of both devices, we do have the slot for the micro SD card and dual SIMs. On the right side of the two phones, we have the volume button and power button. On the top of the Moto G8 Plus, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the noise canceling microphone. Now I don't really like having the headphone jack in the top, I wish it was on the bottom. And with the Galaxy A51, we just have the noise canceling microphone. And then taking a look at the bottoms of the two devices, on both phones, we have a USB-C port for charging and data transfer. They both have a microphone, they both have a speaker, and with the Galaxy A51, we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Then on the back of the two phones, we have the camera modules with the two devices, we have the Samsung logo, Motorola logo, and then we have the fingerprint sensor on the back of the G8 Plus as well. Let's now do a speed test comparison between these two devices. I do have all the recent apps cleared out, and now we'll go to the camera. So one, two, three, go. It looks like the A51 was quicker at pulling up the camera. Let's now go to Google Chrome. One, two, three, go. And it looks like the G8 Plus was quicker at pulling up Chrome. And you can see, by the way, both devices do have brightness at maximum, but without a doubt, the A51 has the brighter display of the two. And especially since it is AMOLED, you're getting better viewing angles. Let's go to yahoo.com. One, two, three, Go. Looks like the A51 was quicker at pulling up Yahoo. Let's go to Engadget.com. One, two, three, go. And the A51 was quicker at pulling up Engadget by quite a bit. Both phones are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Now we'll try some scrolling. So very smooth scrolling on the G8 Plus. Does have to kind of catch up with loading things, but still pretty smooth. And pretty much the same experience here with the Galaxy A51. Let's now go to this article. One, two, three, go. And it was quicker on the A51 to load up. Pinch to zoom is smooth on both phones. So which of these two phones is the better choice for you? That is the question that needs to be answered in this video. And I would say that if you really do need to save $100, the G8 Plus is worth it. You know, I really do like that it does come with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665. That's probably one of my favorite advantages with the Moto G8 Plus compared to the Galaxy A51. Some of the advantages, of course, include better performance in many situations, and then also, of course, better battery life. So that is very impressive. But then one of the downsides, though, with the Moto G8 Plus, we don't have the ability to take photos with the 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, which I feel is pretty ridiculous, personally. Now with the Galaxy A51, I feel like we're getting a better design overall. It's a better, nicer looking phone, in my opinion. I like that we can do a lot more with the cameras on here. I like that we are getting double the amount of internal storage. I also like that the display is AMOLED compared to an LCD display with the Moto G8 Plus. And I also like that the display overall is a bit bigger. So in general, I would say that I prefer the A51 over the Moto G8 Plus. And that does make sense, of course, since it is $100 extra. But I would say that when it comes down to the extra money that it takes to buy the A51, it's pretty much a tie between these two phones. But I'm really curious to know your thoughts about the two devices, so definitely let me know in the comments section below. 
Of course, if you do want to check out the latest pricing for either of them, then take a look at the links in the video description. Definitely let me know though what you think about these two devices. Give the video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.